Thank you very much. So in this work, we're going to look at a different dimension of inequality, and in particular, we're going to look at the inequality of opportunity, and more specifically, the opportunity for social mobility. So just to give a little bit of motivation, we've seen something striking since the beginning of uh, the new century, which is that all across Western countries, there's been a growing disillusion uh, about the shared opportunity of economic growth. And more generally, the idea that economic growth is not necessarily beneficial to all the levels uh, within the society. So for example, I can cite a work by Graham, who finds that the American dream is not anymore a reality uh, for the majority of the people. For example, while 90% of the children that were born in the 40s ended up with a higher real income uh, than their parents, this is not anymore the case for the majority uh, for the people that were born in the 80s. And along the same line, this is a, a sentence that Senator Warren has been repeating quite a lot on the campaign trail, that the system is rigged against the American working class. So what is the idea behind is that working hard is not enough anymore uh, to achieve an improvement of the social status because there are some barriers that are out there and that are quite difficult to overcome. And along the same line, you have these growing populist movements that seems to be supported quite a lot by the people that have been left behind by globalization and technolog technological change who express some fear of social demotion and loss of uh, social status. So generally, there is this feeling that um, equality of opportunities are, are decreasing and there are some freeze of mobility that makes it more and more difficult for somebody that starts, uh, starts life with the unfavorable conditions to make his conditions better. So what we're going to talk about more in particular in, in this work, which is uh, joined with Eric Morin, uh, is, is the internal labor markets. And what do we mean by internal labor markets? Is what used to be uh, these career patterns that existed within the firm. So basically, uh, an, a rather unskilled worker in the 60s or the 70s, he could enter, start working for a firm at the lower level, and then slowly accumulate experience and work his way up and gain uh, an improvement of his social status. So this is uh, quite old literature on this. Here I cite a seminal paper, two seminal papers actually, by Baker, Gibbs and Olmström, who find that the majority of workers' wage growth is typically achieved through promotions that happen within the firm and that are shielded uh, from external competition. And why are they shielded from external competition? There is uh, some evidence uh, from Jovanovic in 79 that there, is, there are high returns from firm-specific human capital, which tell us that basically somebody that has been working for a long time within a firm, even though he doesn't have necessarily a high level of qualifications or a high level of diploma, accumulates this tacit knowledge that belongs to the specific firms and that gives him an advantage over somebody coming from, from outside that may have better diplomas but that doesn't have this tacit knowledge. So this has been used quite a lot to explain the functioning of the labor market in the 60s and 70s, but more recently there is some evidence uh, that th these theories are not so relevant anymore to explain labor markets of today. So this is uh, where we try to come in with this work. We try to document the extent of the decline in internal labor markets across three different industrialized countries, France, the UK and the US. Then we try to move one step for, uh, further and try to look inside the firm black box and in particular try to see how the firms record to internal recruitment and whether this has changed over time. And finally, we try to discuss uh, what we have observed in the light of the recent uh, diffusion of digital technologies. So there we're going to put forward uh, an explanation. We're going to show a few stylized facts that go in the same direction, but our aim is more to open a discussion there and we hope it can serve as a base uh, for future research. So just briefly on the concept, how do we measure internal and external labor markets and, or in internal and external recruitment rates? Within each firm, we can divide the skill structure into four different levels. The first level is going to be um, executives and engineers. The second level, you have mid-level occupations, which include technicians, foremen, and also intermediate positions within service sectors. The third level includes the clerk, which is salesperson um, in administrative jobs mainly, and also uh, skilled blue-collar workers. And finally, 
the last level of the hierarchy is going to be composed of unskilled blue collar workers. So our measure, uh, the way we consider internal recruitment within any one of these levels is that people that were that are currently employed in this uh, in this level and that at the previous period, so at time t minus one, they were already employed by the same firm, but they were doing a lower rank position. So basically, those are people that over the last year they went through uh, a positive, a vertical movement uh, in, in their employment, while external recruitment are going to be people that are currently working within the firm at this at this level, and that in period t minus one. Uh, they were em not employed by the same firm. So either they were working somewhere else or they were not working. So these two concepts allowed, allow us to compute internal recruitment rates and ex external recruitment rates, which are simply uh, the share of currently employed people, either within the firm, but we can compute those also generally uh, in the entire economy, that s since last year, so over the past year, they've been going through one of these two transitions and our measure of total recruitment rate is just going to be the sum between the two. So just one important thing to point out is that external recruitment can happen within each one of the four levels, while internal recruitment is only possible within the first three, because given that we define it as, as a vertical movement, uh, there, is not, there is no additional level below the fourth. And also when we're talking about internal recruitment here, we are measuring important changes of status. So these are really important jumps from a, a skilled blue collar workers to a technicians, for example. So there, there are significant ups, uh, upgrade in, in the status. Um, so the data that we're going to mobilize, in the first part, we're going to look at macro trends. So we use a representative um, labor force survey across these three countries. And the two, uh, the, the period is going to be from the beginning of the 2000s the most recent years, so we have a bit of different periods by country because we have to rely on uh, waves that are comparable with each other. And the, the information that we're going to look at to measure the indicators of interest is first the tenure within the employer. So if the tenure is below one year, we take the, uh, the conclusion that this is a new hire within the firm. And then we also use the information on the occupation on the previous year in order to measure internal recruitment. So our final sample is going to be a representative sample of people between 25 and 65 years old. And we only keep in the private sector because that's really where we think that technology has, uh, has the biggest impact. And then in the second part of the analysis where we try to look a bit more in detail at so what happens within the firm, uh, we rely on this French administrative data, the DADS, between 2003 and 2016. And there we have the entire distribution of the French private sector. We know the occupation of distribution within plants, and even though um, this data is at the firm level, so we cannot follow individuals through time, what we use is the fact that I within each wave, we know what was happening I in the previous period. So if the information is missing on the previous period, we treat this as a new recruitment, while if we know that the worker was already there in, pe in the previous period, but with a different occupation, we can measure uh, internal recruitment. So there we'll have all private sector establishments and we only keep the ones with more than 10 employees because we believe that internal labor markets are not really relevant for smaller firms. And from now on, uh, I'm going to be talking about firms, plant or establishments and I always mean the establishment level. So when we have multi-establishment firms, uh, we treat them separately and we take the assumption that staffing decisions take place at the establishment level. So let me move to show you a little bit uh, what we find in terms of the macroeconomic trends. This is the picture for France. So on panel A, uh, you see what happens in the internal recruitment rates. In panel B, you have the share of total recruitment that comes from internal sources. Uh, and the first observation that is pretty clear is that both of them have been decreasing quite steadily since the beginning of the 2000s. In the graph, you might not see exactly um, the values, but you can find them down there. Internal recruitment went from about 1.5% uh, at the beginning of the period to 0.7% at the end, which is a drop of more than 50%. And something similar happens when we look at the share of total recruitment that comes from internal sources. This has gone from 11% at the beginning to 5.6% at the end of the period. So again, this is a drop of more than 50%. We can do the same thing for the UK. 
and we find uh, something very similar. So in the UK, uh, especially in internal recruitment rates, you can see that the crisis had an impact because you have, uh, have this drop right in 2009, and this gently is recovered later, but beyond the cycle, there seemed to be really something structural going on, and there is never uh, a recovery that goes back to the initial level. So here the drop is of the order of 36% in internal recruitment and of 32% in the share of internal recruitment. And finally, for the US, similar picture. So in the US, the decline seems to be happening, especially uh, in the first decade of the 2000, uh, from 2000 to 2010. But then the level seems to have stabilized at, at, this, at this lower rate. And again, you can see the numbers for the decline up there. And we're talking about declines of about 30% and 20% in the share. So what is also interesting is that these countries are relatively different, especially if we look at the share of internal recruitment out of total recruitment. Uh, France has a much higher level on average than the US, which can be explained by the different institution. But then when we look at the trend, uh, this is fairly common across the three countries, and especially we see a stronger decline in countries, in this case France, that had a higher level at the beginning of the period. Uh, we have some additional facts that I'm just going to list here. Uh, one hypothesis is that this may be driven by compositional changes in occupation or sectors in the economy. So at this time, we know that there's been a decline in manufacturing and a growth in services. So we may think that because there is more internal recruitment in manufacturing, this is explaining uh, the fact that this, uh, there is a decline. But actually, we ran some simulation by fixing the composition, the occupational composition and sectoral composition, and we find the exact same period. So this not, does not seem to be explained by compositional changes. Then we look within specific sectors, within specific firm sizes and social professional ranks, and the decline is common across all of these levels. So there is some heterogeneity, but within each of the group, uh, we see a decline in internal labor markets, and particularly we see that this is stronger in large firms, the one with more than 50 employees. It is stronger within the executive level for France and the UK, uh, while in the US it seems to be more pronounced within intermediate occupations. Uh, and finally, we try to compute the exact same uh, indicators using the French administrative data, and we find a very similar picture, which comforts us in, in this first conclusion. So we have seen that the, there has been indeed a decline that started in the beginning of the 2000s. The next question is, what happens at the level of the firms? How do firms recruit and has this changed over time? So the first observation uh, that we find, and I'm just going to list here, is that internal recruitment is actually much more clustered at the level of the firm than external recruitment. So what do we mean by that is that if we look within the same firm, they seem to be recruiting externally at a similar rate through time, while internal recruitment seems to happen in particular years. Um, so this made us wonder whether they have th this internal recruitment are associated with a particular event. And if we think conceptually, recruitment can be used for two purposes. So the first one is to replace separations. So when you have people leaving, uh, you can recruit either internally or externally. And these uh, separations, we know that depend on the cycle, but otherwise they're relatively um, constant over time. And the second one is to reorganize the skill structure. So let's imagine we want to grow uh, the share of executives. We can do that also through recruitment. And these ones, uh, we know that there are much more sporadic events. There are particular moments in time where firms decide to reorganize. And there are some, some papers here, I cite Caroline and Van Rienen, that shows that uh, this reorganization often takes place at the same time with technological investment. Because when you want to bring in a technological innovation, often you need a specific structure of the firm, and this uh, may need to be adapted. So what we want to try to test is whether internal recruitment is particularly linked to these moments of, uh, of reorganizations. And in order to do that, we propose this measure of reorganization, which is basically the change in absolute, uh, in absolute values of the size of a given rank, summed over all the rank within the firm, and scaled by the firm size. And then we're going to try to measure particular events of reorganization. And in order to do that, 
we take advantage of these measures that what was proposed first by Bassan et al, who use uh, these spikes to measure technological innovation. We're going to do the same, but instead of measuring technological innovation, we measure important point in time for reorganization. So we do observe a spike in reorganization within the firm. If what we observe in a given year, the level of reorganization that we observe in a given year is more than twice as large as the average that we observe within the same firm in the other years. So what do we find? The first, the first observation is that actually the majority of firms uh, go through uh, an important reorganization in our period. So 73% of firms uh, experience at least one of these spikes in reorganizations over the period, and 19% of, uh, of them actually experience two. So reorganization does seem to be clustered in particular point in time, and most of the firms that, that we have in our sample seem to experience uh, these particular moments um, at one point during, uh, during the period. So on the left uh, of this graph, you see what happens on a balanced panel of firms right before the spike in reorganization and right after. And on the left, pan on the left uh, figure, you see what happens to the reorganization itself. So by construction, there is a spike at this moment. And the magnitude is that it goes from about a bit less than 0.2 to 0.5. But what is more interesting is the right panel. So in the right panel, again, uh, on, on the horizontal axis, you have time to this reorganization peaks. But then we look at what happened to internal recruitment, which is in blue, and to external recruitment, which is in red. And what is pretty clear from this picture is that when firms want to reorganize, uh, they tend to record to uh, internal recruitment much more often because we do find uh, this spike that coincides with the exact same uh, at the exact same time and internal recruitment is on on average 5% within the firm but at the point at the moment of this reorganization uh, it doubles and it becomes uh, 10%. So firms uh, seems to be using internal recruitment primarily to reorganize the skill structure. And when we look at this uh, rate of reorganization over time, it went from 0.25 at the beginning to 0.21 at the end. So there is a little bit of decline in these reorganizations, but this is relatively small. So it's not enough to explain uh, the drop that we observe in internal labor markets. So the next question is maybe uh, reorganizations are, are relatively constant, but what has changed is the way firms decide to reorganize or, or the channel that they use to reorganize. So we show you the exact same graph as before, but we split uh, the time uh, of these peaks in two periods. So in the dashed line, you see what happens for the peaks that happened between 2003 and 2008. And the solid line is the same thing, but for the peaks in reorganization that happened in the second half, so between 2010 and 2015. And what we see there is that there is a change and it's a clear change away from internal recruitment. So the, the reaction of internal recruitment at the moment of reorganizations which much was larger in the first period, and the exact opposite happens for external recruitment. So from this, it seems that firms keep reorganizing at a similar rate, but while before they were doing it by hiring people internally, now they are doing more and more so uh, hiring people from outside. And in the next uh, point, we want to see whether there are differences across ranks. So here we, we combine rank two to four together uh, in other occupation, and we look separately for recruitment into executive. And in order to check whether there are changes in, in the, the way firms reorganize, we run these regressions, which basically on the left hand side, you have recruitment rate within this uh, a given rank we look separately for internal recruitment rate and external recruitment rate, and we regress this on the net change of employment in the level, uh, in the rank for which we are looking at recruitment, and we control further for separation rates and overall changes uh, of firm sizes. And importantly, here we include firm fixed effects. So all of our estimation is gonna be identified by changes within firms. And in green, you can see the most interesting result of this analysis. Basically, on the first two columns, you have internal recruitment rate and how it reacts to net changes um, in employment of executive in panel A. Uh, and then the second two columns is the same for external recruitment rates. And what is striking here is that 
the, the, the two levels shift, which means that uh, net changes in executives at the beginning of the period was highly correlated with internal recruitment, and this declines over time, and the exact opposite uh, happens uh, in terms of external recruitment. At the beginning of the period, when the firm wanted to increase the size of, uh, execu of their executives, they were using internal promotions, they were trying to hire people fr from below that were already within the firm, in the second half of the period is the exact opposite. The majority of them went to go to look for these candidates outside. While the similar, pa similar patterns are observed if you look at other occupations, but much less, there m this, the change is much less striking just because already at the beginning of the period, most of the reorganizations were done externally. So it seems that really what changes is the way uh, firms increase their, their executive labor force. So let me move to the last part, the one where we discuss how can we explain the, these facts in the light of technological change. And to resume, what we find is that internal labor market have been declining in France, in the UK, in the US. This has happened across sectors, social professional level and firm sizes. And if we look at the firm level, firms switch from internal recruitment to external recruitment to re reorganize the skill structure. And this is especially true uh, within the, the executive level. So if we think about the context of the beginning of the, the 2000, there was a very rapid diffusion of digital technologies. And we have some evidence out there that shows that uh, these technologies are rather skill biased and that they do have an impact on the, organi on, on the organizational structure. And then if we think about the opportunities that are opened by these new digital technologies is that they allow an unprecedented amount of data to be collected and to be stored and they allow the firm to be codified increasingly. So now all the practices within the firm can be standardized and the data is collected and available to everybody. And what we think is important is that they also open new avenues uh, for supervision. So if before, in order to supervise your subordinates, you had to do it in person and you needed some experience about what, what is the job of, of the people you're supervising, now with this all codification of the firm, you, you have data in real time. So if we think about the sales sector, for example, now you have information about time spent with the client, etc., that is coming in real time. And supervision is not so much anymore uh, something that you do by looking at others, but it is increasingly something you do by analyzing data. So we think that this can have, uh, can have an explanation power from what we observe. And in particular, this adoption of digital technologies by the firm can increase this codification of firm activities and best practices. And there's a result of this is that firm-specific human capital is, is declining in importance just because this tacit knowledge becomes readily available. And at the same time, there can be a change in the tasks that are included in certain occupation and, and particularly the role of supervision. So if before uh, supervision, most included interpersonal skills, now it starts to require more and more uh, technical abilities and, and data analytics uh, skills. And so this again, push in the direction of decreasing the need for first specific human capital and increasing the demand for general human capital. And so as a result, we may have this decline in internal labor markets and at the same time an increasing demand uh, for external professional markets. So I'm just gonna give you a uh, three stylized fact that seems to push in the direction and then, and then I'll conclude. So the first one is uh, each, each one of these scatter plots shows you e each dot is an occupation and on the horizontal line you have how supervisory intensive is the occupation. So how many people within this occupation declare uh, to have supervisory duties and on the vertical line, you have the share of internal recruitment. So how much this occupation recruit internally? And this is for the beginning of the period. So what we see is that internal recruitment is particularly present within the supervisory occupation. And the way we interpret this is that an engineer, for example, it was already very difficult to be replaced by a technician that didn't have uh, the right knowledge because that was already something that was very technical. But for supervisory jobs, it was easier for somebody from below that had uh, accumulated enough experience to take up these opportunities. 
So this is the first stylized fact. The second one shows you the exact same thing on the horizontal axis, the supervision intensity of occupations at the beginning of the period. And on the vertical axis, you have the information of how this changed over time. So how much supervision intensity has changed within this job. And here the correlation is negative uh, and, and highly significant. So we have a correlation of minus 0.52 in France, for example, or minus 0.64 in the US, which tell us that these jobs, that at the beginning of the period they were highly intensive in the supervision uh, uh, tasks, they have been changing o over this period and they are less and less involved with supervision. And finally, looking at internal recruitment and the share of internal uh, recruitment the share of total recruitment coming from internal source, it seems that uh, in the red line you have the high supervisory jobs and it seems that it's exactly there where we observe the decline. So let me just uh, conclude. We have shown uh, that the decline in internal labor markets uh, was substantial over the past 15 years. Uh, this is partly due to the fact that firms rely less and less to internal recruitment in order to reorganize the skill structure and this is particularly true for when they want to increase their share of high skilled workers. And one of possible explanation that we put forward is the fact that the effect of firm digitalization has an effect on the relative demand for firm specific uh, versus general or technical human capital. So the takeaway is that we give a diagnosis of the problem, but then the next step will be to define which policies can be put forward in order to uh, reopen the career ladders. And the second one is that we have this theoretical framework, but the, this work is mainly descriptive, and so we just hope it can serve as a base for future discussion, and in particular, can we test some of this mechanism further, and can we find other concomitant explanations? And the first one that comes to mind is that at the same time, in this period, you have uh, increase in outsourcing, and we do find that firms are increasingly specialized in the sense that they tend to hire more and more similar type of workers, so almost by construction uh, it becomes more difficult to get promoted just because you are in a firm that only employs people uh, similar to you. So that's what we have for now. Thank you. We may have time for one or two questions. Yes. So your measure of progress within firm are these jumps between these four categories? But do you have some other measure, like any promotions within firm, or just like your wage profile within firm compared to switching firms? Yeah, so here our measure of uh, promotions I is a change in occupation and, and, a, and a significant change, so a jump up. We're not looking uh, at wages per se, but what we could see, and we actually see that there is a correlation, a pretty strong correlation with this upward movement in occupation and, and the change in salary. So this guy seems to earn a salary premium from, from this movement. Uh, but yes, he, in this work we're mostly concerned wi with these occupations. Because I mean, it could be that now, I mean, like a blue color worker becomes like a group leader or something, but like not an engineer, like the sort of progress mm -hmm. are a bit smaller, but I mean, still, as long as you're making progress, maybe you still feel like you have, like, opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, of course, it's much more difficult to look at promotions within junior to senior and, and this rely a lot to, to, to how fine I is the occupational uh, description. As I said, descriptively, th this jump seems to be associated with salary gains. Then it's more difficult to find a decrease in, in, in salary growth and explain this by that, because there are so many things that are happening at the same time, and that's what we've seen with the other talk, that it's very difficult to isolate the effect on salaries explained by this from everything else that is happening on, on the wages. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, would, uh, it would be nice, I think, to look within the external recruitment, those that are associated with the increase in the type of occupation yeah. that people have. Because for your initial question, and climbing the job ladder, etc., you could argue that this is done by mm -hmm. job to job transition, and that the blue collars change firm become yeah. uh, intermediary occupation. Right. So, so with, with, the, with the panel, we could. Here, we, the ones that come from extern, from outside, we don't know what was their occupation because they're just missing in the data and we know they're missing because yeah. they, they were not there. But we could do that with the panel and with, with the survey we could do. 
So the, the assumption is that in order to climb the ladder, you need to have the, this firm-specific human capital, and that's why it's happening mostly within the firm, but it's true that we can look that in the data, and it would be nice to show that firms hire more externally, and especially they hire more people that had already this yeah, occupation. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. So we're taking this more as an assumption, but it's true that we should definitely test that. Hmm? One, uh, one description would, uh, would be least interesting is to see, you know, we know that uh, the employment shares of big firms have increased. And so in principle, you know, if there's only one big firm, there's only internal promotion, mm -hmm. limit, right? And, uh, so I'm wondering <coughs> what is the role of, uh, and so in principle, it would, if there is an increase in firm concentration in uh, employment, then it should work in the opposite direction. Right. I'm wondering how, whether and how that plays a role in, in this, and that's just maybe a descriptive in that. Yeah. Uh, because there may be also differences in how this works in very, very large firms versus medium-sized firms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true that the heterogeneity by firm size, we've been looking using the survey, but not we have not explored that very much using the, the French administrative data, and it would be will be interesting to, to check that in more details and see whether, again, we find this more import, this effect uh, to be driven by large firms, and if not, the, if there is some composition effect in where people work. Yeah, I think it would only strengthen the, mm -hmm. the, the surprising fact is the decline, despite the fact that, in principle, I have now a bigger pool of workers from which I can draw. Yeah. But one, one of the descriptive that I, I haven't shown here is that we see that there is a trend towards increasing similarity of people working within the same firm in terms of occupation. So there might be that there are large firms, but they seem to inc either only hire uh, executives or only hire low-skilled people, and that's why they're just not present within the firm anymore, which is a bit of an alternative story for, from what we see. Last question. This is a, a very good paper. Uh, I think consistent with, with the two seem to be opposite. Large firms are becoming larger because they use a lot more technology, they become more automation and more digitalization. And so they become large because it's the winner take all effect. With that, they reorganize their firm where because the cost of information of running the company has reduced, there is less intermediary job so that it's consistent with your results. Yeah, so one of the, the explanation might be that these are the firms that invest the most in this digital technology. We haven't had data on this yet, but we just got access to a small sample of firms and we know whether they, they invest in specific digital technologies. So this is something we could test. Good point. This literature is consistent with the literature on productivity change, where we see that the size of firm is a key determinant of productivity, and that is consistent with exactly the story. So you may want to look at that, I mm -hmm. think, to win. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.